Good evening, Woodland Baptist Church family. This is your message for Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and greetings to anybody else who may be listening to this. One of the best-known portions of Scripture is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is likely the favorite psalm. Psalm 23 is called the Shepherd Psalm. Last week we looked at Psalm 22. In Psalm 22, we see the Lord as our Savior. That psalm pictures Jesus dying for our sins. Now, when we have turned from our sin and put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then the Lord becomes our shepherd. And so Psalm 23 logically follows. Psalm 23 pictures the Lord as our shepherd guiding us through life. Psalm 24 is the Lord is our king, and there we see millennial kingdom blessings. So tonight, Psalm 23, the shepherd's theme is used quite a bit in scripture. Uh, Israel had shepherds, Israel had sheep, and so they could identify with this illustration. Just a couple of them that we'll look at. Jesus is the shepherd of believers. He's the good shepherd. Uh, in John 10, verse 11, normally sheep exist for the benefit of the shepherd, and sheep die for the shepherd. But the Lord Jesus Christ, as shepherd, became the Lamb of God, and as the Lamb of God, he died for our sin. John 1, 29 says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so the key to Psalm 23 is this. You need to make the Lord Jesus Christ your shepherd. Psalm 23 does not apply to unbelievers. Psalm 23 is for those for whom the Lord is their shepherd. So God has blessings for those who trust Jesus as their shepherd. I'm going to look at five blessings tonight. First of all, God provides our physical needs, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And so David, the shepherd boy who became the king of Israel, said that the Lord is my shepherd, is his shepherd. And so he then lists some blessings from having the Lord as his shepherd. A whole lot of people want these blessings, but not everybody wants the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, and you can't have these blessings without Jesus Christ. What are some of the blessings? Well, God provides our physical needs. Needs provided. Verse 1, second half, I shall not want. I shall not be in want. Want means to lack. I will not lack. Earthly shepherds work hard to care for their sheep. They make sure the sheep have everything they need so they prosper, so they do well, so they grow. And God also works to care for his sheep so that we do not lack. Now, this is not the prosperity gospel. This is not the health and wealth gospel that if the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to have a new Cadillac every year, none of that nonsense. But God does provide our needs, and if we don't have it, we don't need it. There's needs provided to the point of contentment. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Here we have sheep lying down in green pastures. It means that they've filled up their belly and there's still more left over. They're now just laying there, chewing their cud. They're relaxing. Now, I grew up with beef cattle, not with sheep. They have some similarities. They have some differences. They have this similarity. They both lie down when they are content. Their bellies are full. They're going to chew their cud. They're going to relax. If I was to draw a picture of contentment, I would probably picture a cow lying down in grass, in the shade, chewing her cud. They're relaxed. They've got what they want. God's word is like that. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. We have all that we need in scriptures. Blessings, and it feeds our soul. It gives us peace and contentment. We have a relationship with Christ when we know our God. 
There's water there as we need it as well. He leadeth me beside still waters. They say that sheep like still but not stagnant waters. They don't like to drink from the, the rapids in a river. Shepherds know that, and shepherds provide that kind of water for their sheep. Water provides refreshment, and God refreshes our soul with the water of the word. Ephesians 5.26 compares the, the, water to the, water, the Bible to the water of the word. And so God refreshes our soul with water, with his word. God encourages our heart, verse 3. He restores my soul, restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. How does he do that? Well, he gives us joy. We get mentally, emotionally, spiritually beaten up and discouraged. God brings encouragement when we focus upon him. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, there's this phrase, that David encouraged himself in the Lord. In context, David's family had been taken captive, and naturally that would be a very upsetting experience, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, and afterwards God enabled he and his, his soldiers to go and, and get the things back. We need to go to God and God's word for encouragement. Jeremiah Chapter 15, verse 6, says this about God's word. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. So there's encouragement. He gives us joy. Where do you go for joy? God gives us direction. Back in Psalm 23, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. If we follow the shepherd, we stay out of trouble. Sheep get into trouble when they wander off. Christians get into trouble when they wander off. How often people will blame God for their troubles, but um, we need to ask ourselves, did you follow God's path when you got yourself in trouble? God comforts us in the valley of death. Third blessing here, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, we, we all go through the valley of death in one way or another, three different ways. There's times when our life may be at risk and we don't know if we're going to live or die. Maybe you have a phys physical condition. Maybe you have a disease and you go to the hospital and you don't know if you're going to live or die. Maybe it's a risky time in your life. Maybe you're a soldier and you're on the battlefield. Maybe you're in law enforcement and you're in a risky situation. Uh, maybe you're just driving down a Minnesota Road in the winter time, and it's icy. And, you know, you, there's risk. But, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Doesn't mean we're never a little bit scared. It means we don't have to fear death. We go through the valley of the shadow of death in times when somebody else is dying. Most of us have been at the bed of a dying person or had a friend or a family member die. It's no fun, but we can do it with God's help. And then the third way is the time when we die. We're going to die unless we happen to be alive at the rapture and we're a Christian. You know. But we, we can face death with God's help. My father used to say the real test of a man's religion is how it works for dying. And that's true. And why don't we need to fear? We look in... Psalm 23, verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We go through it. We don't stay there. It's temporary. It's somewhere, something that we pass through. For a believer, death is just a shadow. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. A shadow can't hurt anything, okay? A shadow 
in fact, tells us that there's light on the other side, doesn't it? So for a believer, death is just a shadow. It, it may look scary, but it's just a shadow. God is with us, so we need not fear. My grandmother wrote in her Bible, I will not go through the valley alone. And she didn't go through that valley alone. Now she's with, the, with her Savior. God's shepherd's tools bring us comfort. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. God has the tools to deal with every situation of life. A shepherd would carry a rod, he'd carry a staff. There's some debate as to which, exa or exactly what these two uh, the things here, the rod and the staff, referred to. The rod was probably the shepherd's club, which he would use to defend the sheep. Know that David killed a lion and he killed a bear. The staff, probably the shepherd's hook. A sheep would maybe be wandering off and the shepherd could reach out and he could grab that sheep and, and pull, it, pull it back. And so a shepherd's tools bring comfort and God's tools, his rod and staff bring comfort. God knows how to deal with our enemies. And God knows also how to discipline us and, and bring us back when we need to be brought back. Fourth blessing here is God blesses us in enemy territory, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. There's a banquet here. Now, most soldiers... When they're in enemy territory and there's some risk, they are not going to lay out a banquet. They're going to grab a, a, a quick something or another, an MRE, and they're just going to eat quick, and they're going to be very careful and watchful while they're eating. It's easier that God, God spreads out the banquet table. I'll prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. It's, it pictures a banquet table, just a a wonderful spread of food on there. We are in enemy territory right now if we know Christ as Savior. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Someday the Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. He's going to rule and reign on this earth. But right now, there's a sense in which we're in enemy territory. But yet God provides and blesses for us right here, right now. Blesses us with with goodness. For most of us, when it comes to food, we have to hold ourselves back. We have so much. We're so blessed here in America. There's other blessings here. It says, my, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now, for most Americans today, or probably most of us in, in this area, um, we would not think it a particular blessing if somebody came up to us and started dumping olive oil over us, right? Oh, what are you doing? Get that slimy, oily stuff off. Me. Oh, I got to go wash my, wash my head, we'd think. But back then, it was a blessing. Priests were consecrated to their office by anointing them with oil. King's coronation was often symbolized by their anointing with oil. You know, today in this church age, believers receive the Holy Spirit at salvation. We are, we are blessed that way. And with all these blessings, we can say our cup runs over. It's God is just pouring, and the cup gets full, and he keeps on pouring, and it's running all over. All those blessings. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then God provides an eternal home, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God provides an eternal home. We have goodness and mercy all of our life, as we've noticed. We know what goodness is. We know what mercy is. Mercy is God withholding deserved punishment. We dwell with God eternally. Where is the house of the Lord? Well, that's where God lives, isn't it? John 14 is also a familiar 
passage. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And so we dwell with God eternally. Those are blessings. The Lord is my shepherd. God has blessings for those who trust Jesus Christ as their shepherd. So the question for you is, is Jesus your shepherd? He becomes your shepherd when you turn from your sins and you put your faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary for your sins. He suffered, he died, he shed his blood, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again to pay the penalty of my sin and your sin. He becomes our savior when we turn from our sins and we put our faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did. Did for us. We're not saved automatically. We have to turn from our sin and ask for that gift of, of salvation. So have you turned from your sin and asked Jesus Christ to be your Savior? If you are saved, do you follow the shepherd? We get into trouble when we wander off and we start looking for better pastures. So it, I kind of like what they're doing over there. Let me try that. And then we get ourselves in trouble. We need to trust our shepherd. We need to stay close to him to avoid trouble. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this wonderful psalm. Thank you, Father, that you will be our shepherd if we will trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Help us, Father, to follow you. Father, if anyone listening does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, pray that your Spirit will convict their heart and that you will draw them to yourself. And Father, help Christians to rejoice in the wonderful blessings that we have in Christ and to follow our Shepherd. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.